So, I'm going to explain a few games to you uh, that will help you. If you have time and you want to work with your actors with a few games, you know, you, you, know, you can do this. Um, one is, uh, there are three types of games that I like to use. Um, there is, I call it status games, relationship games, and then team building games. Okay, and basically, and what I'll do is at the end of this, I will actually give you guys this syllabus, okay? So you will have a copy of it so you can refer back to it um, I, I, um, later on, whenever you want to look back at it, okay? And um, I can also email you any of the games I mentioned here, but I can just explain to you real quick how, how they work. Um, status games basically is how to establish status. Because in a, in a, in a, show, in a, in a um, film, someone always has more status than someone else, right? It's a fact of life. There's lifeboat, job meeting, and last item on the shelf. Lifeboat works where you have a, people are in a, in a boat, and there's four people in it. The lifeboat can only hold three. They have five minutes, and one person needs to get out, or the whole boat sinks and they have five minutes, and you count down. Go, you have five. But they do it as their characters. That's the trick. They do it as their characters. And let me tell you something. Not always does the high status character win. Just because they're high status does not mean, oh, I'm the king. That means you get off the boat. Because the, the meat one will go, but wait a minute, how do anything you say, right? They can turn around and all of a sudden it's like, you're yeah, right, you'll do anything I say, you off. And the highest status person goes, right? But it's all about fighting for what you want. And what do you want? Not to get off that lifeboat, okay? So that's one game. The other game is a twist to that. It's called job meeting, where you have four people at a board meeting. The boss comes in and says, have to let one of you go, but I don't make a decision, so I'll let you guys decide which one goes. <laughs> and if we don't decide in five minutes, you're all fired. <laughs> okay, this is another game. Okay, and then the last one is called last item on the shelf, which basically is last item on the shelf. So you pick something that everyone's gonna wanna want, and then they have to fight, and the person who can make the argument gets that item. Okay, that's called, these are status games. Okay, and they can only, you know, they're like five minutes long, just enough for them to understand how that works. Then there's relationship games. Relationship games are games that deal with relationships and how you deal with people. There's the first one, I've got something to tell you, okay? How this works is, actor B is doing something, okay? I'm preparing for my lecture, all right? So I'm gonna be doing something. Actor, B, actor A comes in and says, I've got something to tell you, and they make up something, such as, Listen, I just found out that I lost my job and we have to move, okay? Or something to that effect. Or I'm pregnant, if I was a girl. I'm pregnant and I'm gonna have a baby. Now, the object is the person who's doing this, whatever they say, they have to be against it, okay? That's part of the thing. And the object is to make the other person say, okay, you win, you're right, I'll do it. So if it was the pregnant thing, she wants him to say, okay, we'll have the baby. And what he wants her to say is, okay, honey, I'll get rid of it. Right? That's the game. Now, moral issues and all that aside, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about you're fighting for what you want. And that's what you get. And then when you're done, they're doing it, you know, uh, I'm Conrad, I haven't said Conrad's name yet. Conrad might say, well, why didn't you say this to him to make him do that, right? You can still comment about it so they can, they can think about it, okay? That's all you're doing. It's just enough to have them play. And then there's the yes-no game, and this is a, a long game, but all, all it is is actor A stands here, actor B stands there. He, can, he or she can only say yes, he or she can only say no, and the object is to make that person cross that person. So if me and Jay are doing it, all I'm saying is yes, yes, yes. She's saying no, and with her no, I should all of a sudden stop and walk over to her and give her what she wants, right? But I'm trying to get her to do that with me. So the object is to make that, that reason so strong that you can't walk over there, right? 
Now, hopefully no one will win, you know, but what you want to see is that the intentions stay the same, but the tactics keep changing. That's it's a tactic game. Keep changing. And then you say, if it's not working, come on, make it work. Make me come to you. You kind of talk to them a little bit. It's called coaching, right? Talk to them a little bit and make them work. Okay. So that is, that is um, the yes or no. And then there's a team building exercise. If you have a big group together, if you have a big group together, there's one that's called, um, oh my gosh, there's one called tribal reunion. And it, it, it's, all it is is you can't say any English at all. And what you basically do is you have them start on separate sides of the room. So let's say we're doing it with you guys, okay? Then I'd have a quarter of you here, a quarter of you here, a quarter of you here, and a quarter of you over there. Then I'd have you act like you are climbing up a mountain. You can't speak any English. There's no English allowed when you're doing this exercise. And you're climbing up, and you're climbing up, and you're climbing up. Then you get to the top. It's a reunion of a family you haven't seen for 20 years. And they celebrate, and you let them just instinctively do what actors do without speaking. And they tell the story, and they do for like... 10, 15 minutes, and it, it's fascinating to watch because you see these stories develop and you're like, oh my God, this is great. And you actually get pulled in as a director watching it. You get pulled in and then you say to them, okay, reunion is over. You have to go back to your homes. You won't see each other for 20 more years. And you watch them say goodbye after having this great celebratory thing and they go away. But it's a great team building experience. It also builds the relationships because you'll, what you'll notice is the characters in your, in your film will kind of rotate towards each other. So they're actually building a rapport with each other before the rehearsals have started or during rehearsals, you know? And even it'll carry on all the way through to the, to the filming, you know? So games are important. Now, of course, you know, you can't always do games, and I understand that, you know? But if you can, try doing games sometimes. Um, the last one, and then we'll go on. I think what we'll do is, um, what time is it? Hold on. Sorry. Let me see what, let me see how many we here. 7.51, we started at, okay. So I'm gonna say one more thing. I'm gonna take, take a 10 minute break, let you guys stretch your legs a little bit, and then we'll come back and finish it and then do some exercises. But I want to say the last one is, uh, oh, tell a story. And how it works is very simple. You guys all sit around the table, and you just start a story. And Gombe starts with, once upon a time, there was a little dog named Muffy who liked to eat bacon. And, and then the semester starts, continues. And he couldn't find any bacon. So he went to the store hoping to find some bacon. But when he got there, he saw A, and then J continues on. And then keeps going down. And they actually, this works on what? Communication. Because you have to listen to what everyone is saying so that your story continues on with what's going. And not only that, they're creating an arc. Because eventually a natural arc is going to happen in the story to where something's going to happen. And then there's going to have to come to a conclusion. And then it's going to be the end. Right? But it's their job to tell the story one or two sentences at a time. All right? Does that make sense, everyone? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so let's take a break because I've been talking for about an hour now. So uh, go and stretch your legs. We'll come back in 10 minutes, and then we will continue on with the last part of this workshop. Thank you. Thank you. But the thing is, okay, um, it's a good question. Is it on? Okay. Uh, did you get Sylvester's question? Not really. Okay. Sylvester had just asked me, he said, well, you know, there are times when there is an emotional scene where the actor or actress has to be very emotional. And he says, I can understand them wanting to do this. You know, oh, I got to get prepared, I got to prepare. You know, is that okay? And my answer is no. And I'll tell you why. The actor should prepare beforehand. If I know that I have to cry in this scene, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go home and I'm going to do my acting exercises. I'm going to use that time for me to prepare and th have that trigger, that trigger emotions, so that when it comes time for me to cry, I can do it instantly and not worry about it, because it's already there. I don't need to go. Hold on, please. 
okay, I'm there, right? <laughs> right? You know, what you don't want is, is an actor taking up the time of the crew, the other actors, while they're preparing for this scene. They should already have their triggers set up for it, you know? And if it's not working, then you cheat. Put an onion. I don't care. Get it, t- t- eye drops. <laughs> and then say, action. And then, oh, and you get it, okay? <laughs> Seriously, okay? Not every actor can cry, but a lot of actors can get that feeling of it. The tears might not come, but they might have it there. The tears just don't come. Mm-hmm. And you just, you know, you find some way of getting around it. Because the emotion is there, the tears don't come. That doesn't make them a bad actor. It just means they can't cry. You know, you can't base an actor's talent on if you can cry. If you can cry on cue, I can't cry on cue, but I can damn it make you feel like I want to cry, even though I'm I, I'm not. Okay. All right. So, um, any other questions before we go on? Uh, it was just a, an observation that I had when you had that actors, directors kind of. Oh yeah. At the beginning. Oh yeah, yeah. The very beginning is that I think like one of the things a director has to be a little bit of is a psychotherapist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's true. It is because you know you, the director does know or should know the insides and outside of the character. They know the reasons why they're doing this, you know? And sometimes they might not know, and that's when you can use, and because they know you always ask questions, if you're asking them a question, they're not automatically gonna think, oh, he doesn't know. He's just asking me to find out what my vision is, or my interpretation of it is, you know? So it kind of works both ways, you know, sometimes. But, um, yeah, you, they do play a psychotherapist, you know, to get to get that, quality and emotion out, you know. Uh, I was talking to Dean outside, and we were talking about, you know, how do, how do you get, like, like you know, like he said he, there's a, a number term, like, you know, you're a 10, can you come down to a 5, right, with, your, with that emotion that you're portraying, right? And he said, well, sometimes I, I, I give them something, but they don't, they don't work with it, they don't run with it. You know, they, and I go, what can I do? And I say, well, that's when you use the as if thing. It's as if, and then you give them something that they can relate to, to that scene, so that they have something visual, because actors are always visual. They're not verbal. They're visual. They think, because their mind is what makes them create the emotion. And if they can visually see it, then they can create that emotion for you. Okay?